time to go back to the basics. I'm Christina Chapetta, a pink bike video presenter and also a bike industry member for 11 years. Now over that time, I have dabbled into nearly every avenue of the sport. You might even say I'm a jewel of all trades, but master of none. You see, I skipped a few key steps along the way and I've never dug too deep into any particular path within mountain biking. In this four part series, we're gonna be addressing some of the fundamental elements in mountain biking that allow me to be more confident and include some tips and tricks off the bike too. Thanks to our friends at Mountain Biking BC, I'm gonna be traveling to eight of the most iconic bike parks and riding destinations here in British Columbia so that I get to ride with some of the most talented and influential women in our sport as they help me go back to the basics. To me, maybe you too, Biking is so much more than just riding down a trail. Before I can even begin to think about other topics we'll cover this series, like going fast, getting hang time, or just looking like a boss in front of the camera, it all begins with conquering my nerves, something most of us have experienced before. Race day jitters, upset stomach, can't quite see straight as you're lining up for a new feature. Loads of people, including myself, have at some point struggled with a hit of nerves, but apparently it doesn't have to be that way. What I need is an experienced racer and a strong head to help keep mine in check. And I know just the person to talk to. To begin this learning journey, if you will, we're meeting with Claire Bouchard here at Whistler Bike Park, the mecca of downhill mountain biking. Also our home mountain, Whistler has four bike access chairlifts servicing over 130 trails. So Claire, I just recently had my first big race in quite a long time and I kind of lost the plot. I experienced quite a bit of anxiety in the start gate and honestly, I just felt unwell. What can you tell me today to help me be a better bike racer? You know, there's so much to talk about when it comes to mental approaches, strategies, and just sports psych in general. Um, but I think today we, we could talk about two main things and that's your controllables and your uncontrollables. So things that are controllables are like technical things, like your, your bike's prepped, uh, your chain's lubed, you know what you're gonna have for breakfast, you know you've got snacks packed and water, and you know you've got a plan for your day. Um, and then physical stuff is like training in the gym all winter or doing your inter intervals, um, fueling your body, so nutrition, things like that. Those are all things that you can control. One of the biggest things you can control is your attitude. And so, you know, when all of those uncontrollables come at you, and it's inevitable that they will, you can totally prevail by kind of adjusting your attitude. In Scotland, I personally, you know, I felt like I was ready for the day. I had, my bike was ready. I felt good. I was wearing what I wanted to wear but something happened in that moment before dropping in that the anxiety and the nerves just took over and they just made me feel sick. So is that more of an uncontrollable scenario? That sounds like dealing with nerves. It's a normal physiological response. So what's controllable is you can learn ways and strategies to manage your nerves so that they don't spiral out of control and you end up feeling sick and you can't eat and you can't get through the day. A few strategies that I learned, and this is just from years of racing and figuring out what works for me and talking to different sports psychs, you can bounce. So it's a, it's a physical thing, like you can literally just kind of ground yourself yeah. because nerves kind of, they come in and they make you feel like you're off your feet. It sounds funny and it kind of looks funny, but it kind of keeps you warm too. So another thing you can do to help manage your nerves is come back to your senses. Like I said before, when you're nervous, you feel like you're out of body. If you kind of come back to your senses and like focus on the moment, what are you seeing? Like what's around you? Wow, this is really beautiful. Um, what are you smelling? What are you feeling? Do you feel the wind on your, on your face? Is your hair blowing? What are you feeling with your fingers? Like all the senses will just bring you back to your, to your body and help to ground you. The next thing I would suggest for managing nerves is just breathing. Sometimes when we're nervous, we have really shallow breathing. And I think if you just really focus on your breath, the exhales will help to get that kind of nervous energy out. This is something you won't have problems with. 
is remembering to have fun. So when you're nervous and you're kind of feeling gross, just remember like why you're here and like this is a privilege, this is, this is fun, like this is why we do it. I like taking that, taking something that could be interpreted as negative, but then flipping the script and being in control of how you use that energy yeah. and just reminding myself, this is fun. You know, everyone trains in the gym and on their bikes, but if 90% of it is mental when it comes down to it, why aren't we training our mental game just as much or even more, you know? Well, this is only one way that I'm working on being a better biker and already I can see that it's a much deeper topic than we can yeah. go in today, but it's something that I am so extremely interested in for myself and I hope people at home can think about it too because it's almost like a taboo subject, you know, mental strength, but it's everything. Like what, what are we and who are we without our mental grounding? Huge thanks to Claire today for sharing so much of her knowledge. I learned a lot about being relaxed in the start gate. The second stop of my BC Bike Park Tour is just a few hours northeast of my home, and I've never actually been there. So what better excuse to check this place out than to meet up with my good pal, Haley Elise, who's a professional rider and photographer. Sun Peaks Bike Park just opened their second bike access chairlift this summer, adding a ton of new terrain. They've even got a cross country pedal loop at the top of the mountain. So something for everyone. With this next lesson, let's have a little fun. Now, whether we're trying to capture the ultimate holiday snap, maybe show off to our friends that we're having more fun and they're not, or just document all the adventures we're going on, media is, well, it's a huge part of our sport. So Haley, as you know, I spend a lot of time in front of the camera for work and I get to ride my bike a ton, lucky me. But truth is, I don't put a ton of thought into the other side of the filming process and I know I could do better. Well, it is the 21st century and photography and videography are a big part of our lives. Whether it is wanting to put your best foot forward with a great photo on the gram or even analyzing your own riding. So in a few key points, what can you teach me today about being a better rider to work and shoot with? So first and foremost is communication and collaboration. You want to keep an open line of communication with your athlete and that also goes both ways, the athlete communicating with the photographer. So what that looks like is both of you are talking about what features you want to either shoot or what the athlete feels the best on and you're also wanting to make sure that it's a fun and stress-free environment so that helps with talking. Um, yeah, it would be cool if you wanted to like see if you could ride it high. Yeah. I was kind of thinking if like you could air off of it a little bit, like a bar tweak or a scandy flick or something. Mm -hmm. Just some style points. Yep. All right, we got light. Let's go. Drop it. Yeah, good job, Tina. That looks Yo. sick. Nice. Fun. I like the dirt coming up there, your body language. I like actually that you're like kind of looking at me too. Your, your head, yeah. Should we go shoot something else? Yeah. Let's keep exploring this Definitely. bike park. So that leads us into the second point, which is playfulness. If you're having a good time, that translates into the riding. So I like to encourage my athlete to take the time to get to know a feature, play on it, try some things out, not go into it expecting that they're gonna nail it on the first time. And that also works with the photographer as well. Getting into that flow state takes time. So hitting that feature again, and maybe even again, so that you do end up looking your best. I really try to communicate that to the athlete, to take their time, hit it a bunch of times, get comfy on it, look at the photo mm -hmm. as well, and um, then ultimately we can achieve the best photo. Yeah, that's pretty rad to bring that expertise to, I mean, this shoot, but then every shoot you do because you are a rider and you're a photographer. So you already have that creative mind going. And I'm sure that you can probably see when your athletes out there getting a little tense and you kind of know that feeling yourself so you can help them relax a bit out there on set. Bringing it back to just creating some magic. So this step down to hip looks pretty good, eh? 
I think so, uh, to the naked eye anyway. I, I prefer to table to the left over there, so I think it's worth a shot for sure. Perfect, that was gonna be my next question was uh, what you'd probably do on this and uh, which side you'd be doing that to, so that's awesome. I'm gonna go line up a shot and we'll go from there. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Let's see what that looks like in review. I think I could do it again with like a bit more table. A yeah, let's less try it. Let's saddle. do it. Let's do I it. I love hiking my bike, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, buddy. Good job. That looks killer. Yeah, you got comfy on it. Learned it. Looks yeah, bad. Learned up. Now you you want to hit it too? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Patience and flexibility is also really important. It takes time to create art. So slowing down, waiting for the right light, waiting for the right trail conditions, taking that time to get to know the feature, that all translates into the best product. Yeah, super good point. A lot of times I feel like we can get out there, we're just on a bike ride, we're rushing to take a shot or capture you know, this moment in time. But if you really wanna show yourself in the best light, which is what I'm trying to do here, then it takes, it takes time. It takes patience, you know, maybe maybe you want to go ride on that day, but the trail's not running to the best of the ability, or if it's a little muddy, it's going to make you feel a little sketchy on the bike and maybe look a little sketchy too. So super good point there. Thank you so much, Haley, today for sharing your experience in front of and behind the camera. I think it's going to help me a lot working with my own creative team. Now this is just episode one of Back to the Basics and already I have been put to the task to conquer my nerves by tackling some of those mental battles. Also, I learned some tips to look and feel better in front of the camera and those are just two of the eight tasks I've set out to work on. Stay tuned for the next few episodes where I learn about finding the fun in riding again, working on my style and what that even means. And of course, we're gonna touch on some of the darker sides of biking like injury, and recovery. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you get to see which six BC bike parks we head to next and who we get to introduce you to.